In this lesson, we shall focus on the Gauteng Province Preparatory Examination 2023 Mathematics Paper 1. It was written in three hours out of 150 marks. And we proceed as follows. In our previous discussion, we covered question one and we solved question one in full and in detail. And that was yesterday evening. Moreover, we looked at 1.2, we also looked at 1.3, we solved 1.2, we did the simultaneous equations, but we also did 1.3 as well. In our previous discussion. Question two was done, and we spent time on finding the value of P and the, the first term of the sequence, the common difference, and so on. Two point two, we solved this particular problem. Question three, we did this question three on sequences and series. We found T6, we dealt with convergence, but we also looked at the question 3.3 .3 as well. We did question four on the graphs, G and H. We solved these particular questions also from the paper of uh, 2023 preparatory examination. Right, we also looked at 4.4 and 4.5 of last year, 2023 Mathematics Paper 1 examination that was written in September last year. We looked at question four and in particular 4.6, we sketched the graph in the answer book. We showed clearly all asymptotes and intercepts with the axis. Right, so we looked at the question 4.7 and 4.8. We looked at 4.9, the graph being reflected in the x-axis and, and so on and so forth. Right, our focus today, it's gonna be on question five. And uh, now we are on a mission to finish this whole paper. So in question five, we shall actually look at the fact that the graphs of f of x, which is minus, x minus seven over two squared plus 81 over four and g of x equals minus three x plus 24 as sketched below. The graphs of f and g intersect at points d and b. They intersect at points d and b. Here is the point d and here is the point d. It is certainly at those points that the graphs of f and g intersect. Right, points A and B are the x-intercepts of, of F, right? So we have that A and B themselves enjoy being the x-intercepts of what? Of F, we can see clearly A is here and B is there. Write down the coordinates of E, the turning point of F. We look at this carefully. Right, so I have parallel on the line but I also have Nombuso on the line, the two of you which I had previously, right? We have X minus seven over two squared plus 81 out of four. This is the equation of F. And the first question is write down the coordinates of E, the turning point of F. Who can tell us the answer to this before we continue? Nombuso, what are the coordinates of E, the turning point of F? Pejelelo, what are the coordinates of E, the turning point of F? There is E there, but what are the coordinates of E, the turning point of F?
Right. What are they? Okay, so you will note, therefore, that we can be able to find the coordinates of E, the turning point of the function F. Pekalelo, what are the coordinates of E, the turning point of this function F? What are the coordinates of E? Pekalelo. Nombuso. What are the coordinates of E, the turning point of F? Nombuso. What are the coordinates of E, the turning point of F? Nombuso. Pekalelo. What's the answer? What's the answer? Right, we're able to see at this point that if you are told in the exam that y is equal to ax minus p squared plus q, the turning point becomes p and q. So the coordinates of E will then be 7 out of 2, 81 out of 4, 7 out of 2, 81 out of 4. And these become the coordinates. So in other words, the 7 out of 2 is picked clearly from there. Because if it is minus P, you just write down the P. And if it is Q, then you just write down the Q there. Like so. Determine the average gradient of the curve of F between 1 and 5. Determine the average gradient of the curve of F between X equal to 1 and X equal to 5. So what is going to happen is that you have the function F of X which is negative, x minus 7 out of 2. You square this plus 81 out of 4. We find f at 1, at x equal to 1. 1 minus 7 out of 2. You square this and then you have 81 out of 4. And then we have 2 minus 7. And 2 minus 7 is clearly what? It's clearly a minus 5. And you square that. Right. And when you square that, you get actually exactly minus. The minus 5, you square that. You get a 25. Right. You get exactly 25. So that's what you write down. So you're going to have precisely... Negative 25 out of 4 plus 81 out of 4. Then now when we have actually 81 minus 25 out of 4, you can use a calculator to do that as follows. Check this out. Meaning we have, for example, Eighty one minus twenty five, fifty six. Fifty six, you divide it by four, you get exactly a fourteen. Meaning here you'll get exactly fourteen. We find F at five minus five minus seven over two squared plus eighty one out of four. Right, if need to be, you can just use a calculator straight away because the calculator are allowed in the exam. So you have open bracket, negative open bracket, five minus 
seven out of two. You close. You square. Plus 81 out of four. Right, you do this and you get exactly 18. Right, you get one eight. You get exactly one eight there, rather, yeah, one eight. You get exactly one eight. Right, so upon careful examination, we're able to continue and analyze this carefully. Meaning at this point, we can find the average gradient. The average gradient. Which means it is f of five divided by five minus one. What is f of five? It's 18, f of one is 14 divided by five minus one. What is 18 minus 14? It's a four divided by four and you get one. And that is the average gradient. We've determined the average gradient of the function f between one and five. But also we note that the average gradient is between the points, right? Where x is one, and uh, now whenever x is 1, y is 14. Whenever x is what? Whenever x is 5, y is 1, 8, 18. As a consequence, the average gradient can be determined. Right, as uh, the slope. But also, I want to indicate uh, something about the average gradient. Normally, it's written in many ways. For example, the average gradient is also shown as m, which is change in y, change in x. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Any question? So this is change in y, change in x. This is called also the average gradient given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And therefore, we are able to get the average gradient. We move on to 5.3. And 5.3 goes as follows. Calculate the value of A, the x coordinate of point D. Point D here has the coordinates A and B. And now you need to find, cal calculate the value of A, the X coordinate of point D. The X coordinate of point D. Calculate the value of A. Calculate the value of A. Right, the X coordinate of D. Remember the graphs F and G intersect at points D and B. So this point D that is sitting here is the point of intersection. It's the point of intersection. Right. So now let us continue. So now in 5.3, You'll be able to find what you call the point. The point of intersection. What is the point of intersection? It occurs whenever F equals G. Minus X minus 7 out of 2. Squared plus 81 out of 4. The G is minus 3X plus 24. In a upon careful examination, we square this. And if we square this, we have minus. You square the X, we have X squared plus 49 out of 4. Plus 81 out of 4. Minus 3x plus 24. 
minus x squared, 7x minus 49 out of 4, plus 81 out of 4 equals minus 3x plus 24. Minus x squared. Now we have uh, actually the 7x together with the 3x. It gives us exactly a 10x. So we're done with this one, done with this, we're done with that. You realize, therefore, if you add these ones here, you add minus 49 and uh, the 81. Right, you'll be able to get the result. What result you'll be able to get here? You said 32 divided by 4, 32 divided by 4 becomes what? Becomes 8. 8 minus 24 gives us minus 16 equals 0. Divide through by negative. x squared minus 10x plus 16 equals 0. x minus 2 which means therefore x is 2 or x is 8 right when x d x at d now x at d Sir? yes please so, um, looking at the mark allocation, you yes. can simply say um, for x intercept, let y equals to zero and use the g of x. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, you can clearly say that for the x intercept, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. We are looking at, am I speaking to parallelo? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. Excellent. Okay, let's let's talk about the question. Okay, first and foremost, you think that we can just look at the at the g the equation of g. Is that what you think? Okay, because the marks are how many? The marks are three, right? Okay, because we're doing five point three, and we want to determine a the x coordinate of d. And D is the point that sits here. Correct. And D is a point of intersection. So D is a point. Of what? Intersection. D is a point of intersection. Okay, so I want to find the coordinates of this point here. And so you look at the fact that if we could say, you're saying let y be zero, is that what you think? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. So you let y be zero. And y is zero is gonna give us an x intercept. When y is 0, what we're getting is an x-intercept. So g equals that means y is minus 3x plus 24. When y is 0, 0 is minus 3x plus what? Plus 24. Meaning 3x is what? Is 24. And x is 24 out of 3. x is going to become what? 8. It is correct. So that would mean that the point weight cards, it's gonna be x8 and y0. But that is gonna give us an x-intercept. Yet the examiner is interested in us finding the coordinates of the point D. The examiner is interested in us finding the coordinates of the point D. You see that? 
But isn't it the x coordinate, which is a? Okay, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it must be a. And what is the x coordinate, which is a? D has the coordinates a and b. So want to find a, right? And what is mm -hmm. what is D? D is a point of intersection. So to get the coordinate, the, the x coordinate, we have to find the point, a point, a point of intersection, or the point of intersection, which is D. And how do you deal with the point of intersection? Where the two graphs meet. You must make the two graphs equal because the point of intersection are equal. And the kind of x value you'll get from there is the correct one. Okay, this, this is a value, uh, a value of x. It is an x coordinate, but it is an x intercept. And of course the graph has an x intercept, but want to find d. D is up in the air. How would you find the coordinates of the point d that is in the middle of nowhere? You would have to classify it as the point of intersection and then say the point of intersection the two graphs are equal to each other. It is correct to then say you want to find the x coordinate and you let y be zero in the straight line. But the straight line is gonna give an x intercept and the x intercept is when we, when we let y be zero, what we get is an x intercept. Any question? In other words. So say if I do it like this, I'm, I'm gonna get it wrong. Yo, they're gonna say you found an X intercept, but they want a point of intersection. Okay. It, it is an X value, but how did you get the X value? We said let Y be zero. And the minute we say let Y be zero, what are we getting? It is an X intercept. Where do we see an X intercept? It is where the graph, so obviously we're dealing with a straight line graph, g of x equals minus 3x plus 4. Where does this graph cut the x-axis? That is the x-intercept. That is where the straight line is going to cut the x-axis. But the examiner is not interested in that. He's interested in finding the coordinate, the x-coordinate of d, which is a. How do you find the x-coordinate? First, you must ask yourself, what kind of a point is that? And at this point, there's a point of intersection. And then point of intersection, you must make the graphs equal. That's a mark for that in the exam. To say, you know what point you're dealing with. You're dealing with a point of intersection where the two graphs meet or intersect. And hence, that is why here, we then said, want to find the X coordinate. And what is D? D is a point of what? Of intersection. D is a point of? Intersection. T is a point of intersection. If D is a point of intersection, we must equate the two graphs. If you get the two graphs, F equals G, we get this quadratic equation, we factorize it, and the factors of x squared minus 10x plus 16, the factors are x minus 2, x minus 8. And then you get x equals 2 or x equals 8. And then x at d, because you got the 8, the 8 is uh, the is the x coordinate of b, because indeed the, the, the graphs intersect at two points. They intersect at b, but they also intersect at d. But the examiner is interested in d, and the d is in the air and can only be found by equating the two functions, making them equal to each other. Any question? Yes, sir. Okay, what do you think, Nambuso? <clears throat> Same. Yes. Um, okay, on this um, question, say, yeah. Um, the thing that I did here, yes. I first, um, I first go to e equation yeah f at x. Yeah. Then I made I made the that equation to be quadratic. 
You made it quadratic, so you expanded. You expanded, you multiplied out, you opened up the brackets, right? Yes. Okay. Then after that, after that, um, okay, on that, um, with st standard formula, I have my A, which is negative one, and the star. Yes. So, yes. Um, use the equation X is equal to negative B over 2A. Yes, you use the equation. X equals minus B over 2A, uh-huh. And this equation is for finding the axis of symmetry, okay? Mm -hmm. Or oh, it has to do with finding the S coordinate of a turning point. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. Say... Yeah? Okay. Then I substitute my... Okay. Then... Then... X... On my equation, I use it um to substitute on my equation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's I fine. Think. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. But obviously, that is going to be the turning point. So that's fine. What you've done. But the, that is going to help us to find uh, the turning point. That is going to help us to find the turning point, which is going to be E, where the graph is a turning point, because this is for finding the X coordinate of the turning point. But the examiner is looking for the point D, which is a point of intersection. What you have done is correct. But the examiner is not interested in the turning point. And this equation is for what? For the turning point. That formula is for the turning point of the graph of the parabola. Any question? OK, let's continue. You will we'll see exactly what's happening. Right, we still have this question, and points A and B are the x-intercepts of F. Point S with coordinates x and y is a point on the graph of F. Case S. S is that one. There. And uh, is a point on the graph of F where the x lies between A and 8. Okay, that's fine. 8 is here and A is somewhere there. Because the A matches with the D, this one. And the D has the coordinates A and B. Line ST is drawn parallel to the y-axis. There's a line ST. That is S and that is T. T is that one. It is drawn um, actually parallel to the y-axis with T on the graph of G. T on the graph of G. There is T on the graph of G. Determine ST in terms of X. Determine ST in terms of X. Two marks. Who can do that one? Who can do that one? S is this one, and T is that. Let us find ST in terms of X. Who can find ST in terms of X? Pejadelo. Let's give you a chance. What is ST in terms of X? Pejadelo. ST in terms of X parallelo. What is ST in terms of X parallelo? What is ST in terms of X parallelo?
Okay. ST. ST has the graph of F above. So ST would have to be the distance between S and T, and that is the upper curve minus the lower, lower curve. ST becomes, what is the upper curve? The upper curve is F, and the lower curve is a straight line G. So the upper curve is f of x, the lower curve is what? Is the straight line g of x. What is f of x? x minus 7 over 2 squared plus 81 over 4 minus g of x. Minus 3x together with 24. So we... Expand everything. If you expand this one, what you get is minus x squared plus 7x plus 8. And then you have plus 3x minus 24. Which means, therefore, that st is equal to minus um, x squared, the 7x and the 3x will give us 10. 10x will give us 7x and 3x will give us 10x and 8 minus 24, what's the answer? It's a minus 16. And therefore st itself it's actually exactly that. So ST is minus X squared plus 10X minus 16, and the marks are two. So you get your two marks there. That is what they asked the students in September last year in the Gauteng province. Any question? Where's the question? Where's the question? Where's the question? Where's the question? No question. The next thing we want to do now is to calculate the maximum length of ST. Calculate the maximum length of ST. Right, so which means you have ST. which is minus x squared plus 10x minus 16. Okay, minus x squared plus 10x minus 16, that is st. You got that one from the previous question. How do you find the maximum length? How do you find the maximum length? To find the maximum length, you find the derivative. Or you can do it like this. Right. You can find the line of symmetry, like uh, you said, Nombuso minus B over 2A, which is going to be the turning point, And the graph is a negative here, which means it's going to have a maximum turning point. Right, minus, what is the B? It's 10. 2A is negative 1, which is minus 10 over minus 2, giving us X equal to 5. So which means, therefore, that you'll have X equal to 5 there. And whenever X equal to 5, then you must plug into the equation. Which is minus X squared plus 
Ten X minus sixteen is T, which is minus five squared plus ten times five minus sixteen. Minus 25 plus 50 minus 16. 50 minus 25 is 25. 25 minus 16 is what? It's a 9. And therefore, ST is 9 units. And this one is the, because the shape of ST is quadratic and the coefficient of x squared is negative. So it's going to have a maximum vertex, like so. Allowing ST to have exactly nine units. And this is the maximum length of ST. Maximum length of ST. Where's the question? Where's the question? In the absence of a question, where to calculate the maximum length of ST, and that is the maximum length of ST. That is the maximum length of ST. And move forward. The graph of f of x equals uh, 3 to the power x is sketched below. The point P has the coordinates minus one and one third is a point of F or the point on F. P is a point on F. P is a point on F. Write down F inverse in the form Y equals something. Okay, because F of X is equal to 3 to the power x. Then f inverse will be what? Parallelo. What is f inverse? What is f inverse? Okay. Sir? Yeah, what is f inverse? Um, is it 1 over f? f over 1? What? Please come again. Is it one over s? Okay, how do we find the, the inverse of a function? Because f of x is a function. How do we find its inverse? I, I, I always test you guys. I always test you. You will forgive me. I always test you. This is a little test. You said, is it not one over one over something? Okay, that's fine. So it has to do with one over something, but I'm gonna give the following rules for the functional inverse, the inverse of a function. What you need to do, you must write first the function f like this, and then write y is three to the power x. Then after that, you come and write the inverse. The inverse, you swap the rows of the x and the y. Wherever there is y, you put x. Wherever there is x, you put y like this. This is the inverse. So the inverse of a function, you swap the x and the y. Wherever there is y, you put x. Wherever there is x, you put y. Do you see that? Okay. Then at this point, you get the answer to be this one. All right. Okay. Okay. We continue. Sorry, I lost you. I lost you. Is it Nombuso? Yes. Okay, Nombuso. How do we find the inverse of a function? Um. Okay. They said if. Okay, I told. Okay. 
Um, if you want the inverse of 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 x, it, you must um you must but then you must change the x to the other side. Okay, so what do we get? So what do we achieve if we change the x to the other side? What do we obtain? You will get um, three exponents. We'll get three exponents, right? So I'm going to write out whatever you are saying because I want to know, I want to check, I want to see if it is right or not. Three exponent what? Y. Please come again. Three exponent y. Okay. Yeah. Is that the answer? Okay, that's fine. Pekalelo, what do you think? We are discussing here, remember? We're not in a hurry, we're not running. We're not in a hurry, we're not running. Okay, this is what I need to teach. Now, what you do is to then take why at this point will become the log of x base 3. Y would become the log of x base 3. Any question? So this new y is the inverse. And therefore, you can come and then say, f inverse of x is the log of x base 3. And that is the inverse. But obviously, the examiner wanted the inverse in the form y equals something. So y is the log of x base 3. The next question in 6.2 says to sketch the graphs of y equals f inverse and y equals f inverse of x minus 2 on the same set of x's. In your answer book, clearly indicate all intercepts with x's. How do you sketch a graph of the inverse? How do you sketch the graph of the inverse? How do you sketch the graph of the inverse? How do you sketch the graph of the inverse? Where's the question? Nombuso, parallelo, parallelo, how do you sketch the graph of the inverse? How do you sketch the graph of the inverse, parallelo? How do you sketch the graph of the inverse? Because they're saying sketch the graph of y equals f inverse this one. How do you sketch it? What do you do? So are you going to um substitute the log x3 at f to the exponent negative one and then yes. Uh, Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine because I'm testing you. It's okay. I'm just testing you and I, I'll always test you. You'll forgive me because I'll always test you. Okay, to do this, you need to take points. There's a point P with the coordinates on the graph of F. The point P has the coordinates one and what? And three. Then you need to identify a point on F inverse. A point of N uh, on F inverse is going to switch the coordinates. So it's going to have one third and what? And minus one. So a point on F, 
You can write some two points. Like uh, on F, there is a point and there's also a point here. This is the graph of F. When X is zero, when X is zero, you would have three to the power zero. What is three to the power zero? What is three to the power zero when F of X is zero? At x equals zero, then there's f to the power zero. Three to the power. What is three to the power zero? One. It's one. Thank you. I'm just testing you. Okay, now this is a point on the graph of f because f of x is three to the power x, and then f inverse. You're gonna switch the coordinates. If you switch them around, we have one and zero. One and what? And zero. So now, you come and then say, this is a graph of F, then you need to sketch a graph of F inverse. So you need to realize that here, X is positive and Y is negative one. X is positive, maybe you put it here. You put it here. One over three, so X is positive. Maybe you make it one over three. And then Y is negative one. And then you have another point. Whenever X is, whenever X is one, Y is zero. Whenever x is 1, y is 0. Is this point here? 1 and 0. And this other point. So the graph now is going to be something like this. You join those two points. You join the two points. So to find the inverse, just to find two points on the graph of f. And then for the inverse, you just switch the coordinates around. Because it was x and y. And then you put y first and x second. You put y first and then x second. And then you just join the points. Like that. And then the inverse becomes a mirror image. It becomes a mirror image of a graph along y equals x. Mirror image. So also, the, another way to get the inverse is you put a mirror here. Then whatever, if you put the mirror here, Facing this graph here, the, its image is going to be inside the mirror, taking this position. This is the graph of f of x. Uh, this is the graph of f inverse of x. And this one is the graph of f, as the examiner showed it there. What is the next thing? But the examiner said you must find the graph of f inverse of x, which is this one. So this is the graph of F inverse of X, and this is Y. Pay attention. What is the graph of F inverse now when it's X minus 2? Now you are changing, and you are looking at the graph of F inverse of X minus 2. What happens to the graph? So the graph of X minus 2, you get it from the graph of F inverse, but you move it by how many units and in which direction? If it's x minus 2, does it move to the left or to the right? No, Buso. If it's x minus 2, does the graph move to the left or to the right? Um, to the I'm just testing, right. I'm testing you. OK, that's fine. You are right. It is to the right. So this graph is going to move two units two units right or to the right. So if it is at one now, because it's the graph, this graph of F inverse, two units to the right is gonna be at what? It was at one, and then you add two. So one plus two is equal to what? It's equal to three. So the graph now is gonna be here like this. And the graph is gonna be at three for X. And then it's gonna be like that. So this blue graph is going to be the graph of F inverse of X minus 2. Any question, Nombuso? 
Any question, Pekhalelo? So because they said, sketch the graphs of F inverse and also F inverse of X minus two on the same set of axes in your answer book. Clearly indicate all intercepts with the axis. And the intercept the axis is going to be at three. The intercept here is going to be at one. Any question? Any question? Any question? Any question? Okay, now just have a question to move on. Use your graphs drawn in 6.2 to solve for X if the log of this is the case. Let's use the graphs. So you need to use the graphs to do question 6.3. Now we have been given the log of X minus two base three is less than one. Use the graphs to solve for x if this is the case. To solve for x if this is the case. What is the answer? What is the answer? We saw that you have the graph of the graph of f inverse of x. The graph of F inverse of X minus two. You can write here, F inverse X minus two. Then we also have some information. This one is at what? Is at one and then this one is at three, like that. So the question is, what is the value of x here? Use the graphs to find the value of x. Parallelo, what is the value of x? What is the value of x? What is the value of x? Right, so there are a couple of things you need to take into account. There is a, a part where this graph is one. So there are two graphs you're dealing with here. You have the graph of the F inverse of X minus two. which is the log of x minus two base three. And then we have another graph of y equals one. Somewhere there. Right, so now you need to actually be able to find the values of x for which this function f inverse is smaller is smaller than one, so it is below. The question is, what are the value of x for which this function is below one? So now there, there's a certain value of x here. And it is at that value of x, if you say it's less than that, then the function is gonna be below one. So what is exactly that value of, of X? So we continue.
so that in the end, you would actually realize that you need to take x minus 2, for which this is the case, bigger than 0. Right, you would require that x minus 2 be bigger than 0, so that x is bigger than 2. And, and that is one solution for which this must be defined. But also, if this is to be equal to 1, then you do the following. So this is the case. And x minus 2 is less than 3 to the power 1. 3. From here, you exponentiate like this. So it becomes x minus 2 is less than 3 to the power 1, which means x is less than 5. Two things. Bigger than 2, less than 5. 2, then 5. X. When X is bigger than 2, you plot it here. When X is less than 5, you plot it there. And therefore, the answer will become what? The answer will become x between 2 and 5. x between 2 and 5. x is between 2 and 5. Any question? Any question? So the answer is this one, x is between two and five there. So the answer to 6.3 is two is less than x is less than five. That is the answer to 6.3. We move on to the next question. Move on to the next question. The next question is on Math of finance. The next question is in math of finance. Right. A survey conducted in December 2015 determined that 5.7 million South Africans were living with HIV. The researchers used a model of exponential growth, A equals P, open bracket, 1 plus I to the power N, to predict that there will be 6 million people living with HIV in December 2022. Calculate as a percentage the annual rate of increase that the researchers used for the seven years. What's the question? Calculate as a percentage the annual rate of increase that the researchers used. Okay. Who cannot see this question? What is the answer to this question, Nombuso or Pehalelo? What is the answer to this question? Please try this question, two minutes. Please try this question for two minutes. Please try this question for two minutes, the two of you. Pekalelo Nombuso.
please try this question. Um, the two of you guys, let me know when you're done. What is the answer, Numbuso? Parallelo, what's the answer? Parallelo, what's the answer? Numbuso, what's the answer? Numbuso, what's the answer? Numbuso, what's the answer? I lost parallelo, I lost parallelo, yeah? Yeah, if I lose you, please try to reconnect. If I lose you, try to reconnect. What is the answer to this question? Numbu, so what's the answer? Perelelo, what's the answer? You have two minutes. Try this question, please. Two minutes. Try this question, please. Two minutes. Try this question, please. Two minutes. Numbuso, what's the answer? Perelelo, what's the answer? Right. First things first, uh, they used uh, the following model. The researchers used the model to the model of exponential growth. Which means that A is P1 plus I to the nth power. Say I'm done. What answer did you get, Nombuso? Um, I get zero comma one four percent. Zero comma one four percent, right? Zero comma one four percent. Okay, let's write your answer down. You got zero comma one four percent, right? That's fine. Parallelo, what answer did you get? We shall do it together, remember? So, this answer came from Nombuso. Perelelo, what answer did you get? I'm trying to make you think so that, because these things are easy, but you see, 
if you practice, then practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Okay, that's fine. So, but they used the model A equals P open bracket one plus I to the nth power. So a survey conducted in December 2015 determined that 5.7 million South Africans were living with HIV. And that was in the year 2015. The researchers used the model of exponential growth, A equals P, open bracket, one plus I to the n power, to predict that there will be 6 million people living with HIV in 2022 December. So now we have 2022 minus 2015, and the years are how many? The years are seven years. So in other words, from 2022, from 2015 to 2022 is a total of seven years. Okay, so they said calculate the percentage, they calculate as the percentage, the annual rate of increase that the researchers used for the seven years. Right, so that in this case, you would note that in 2022, they said there could be 6 million. So the final value is going to be 6 million. The final value is going to be 6 million. The present value is going to be 5.7 million. 5.7 million is 5 million and 700,000. I to the power N. N is 7 years. So you divide by 5.7 million, 5.7 million is 5,700,000, giving us exactly 6 million. You divide by 5.7 million, 5.7 million is 5,700,000. 1 plus i to the seventh power. Here you're going to get the seventh root of 6 million divided by 5.7 million. And then you also take here the seventh root of 1 plus i to the seventh power. So that in the end, then you have the seventh root of 6 million divided by 5.7 million, 5 million 700,000. Okay, take the seventh root, it becomes exactly one plus i. Upon careful examination, you want to solve for i and therefore it becomes the seventh root of 600, of, of rather 6 million, minus 5.7 or divided by 5.7 million minus one and the answer is approximately what okay we continue i lost someone i lost perhaps i think maybe it's the network all right so if I lose you, please try to reconnect. Okay, this is the, you need to get the correct. Right, so this is exactly the seventh root. Then you have exactly six million. Divided by... 5,700,000. You subtract one. Right, so let us write it as... Okay, so what then you're getting is exactly 1.00735. One point. Double zero seven three five. 
one point. Double zero seven three five. You multiply by one hundred. And if you multiply by one hundred, it's gonna move the decimal place, it's gonna move a couple of places. Right, okay. Obviously, here you subtract one. And if you subtract one, it's going to be equal to zero point double zero seven three five. You multiply by 100%. In other words, you have zero point double zero seven three five. You multiply by 100%. So this is going to move one two places which is actually exactly zero point seven four one two places because i'm playing by 100 percent which is 0 0.74 percent any question so the answer must be 0 0.74 percent so rombuso was pretty close but is this one or seven Nombuso? because the answer is 0 0.74 percent um say it was 0 comma 14 so now i saw my mistake okay that's fine this lesson is being recorded even if your network is bad please try to reconnect okay please make the effort to reconnect because we're preparing for the prelims and the prelims are here already on Friday, you guys are writing numbers, is it correct? So it means that even yes, during sir. the week, even during the week, we need to practice more. If you are available, if you are free, if you are busy, we understand during the week. But if you are free, because you are not even going to school, are you going, are you going to school this week? Because you are writing prelims. Yes. Yes, sir. we are writing. Tomorrow I'm writing the African language. But now you're going to be writing yes. in the morning or in the afternoon, or both morning and afternoon? Um, you in the afternoon. Check. So what? You, so in the morning you're going to be doing what? You're going to be sitting at home? I'm just asking. Yeah. Like, the wife, my sister uh, will go with her wife so oh i understand all right okay that's fine i understand okay okay let's move on okay let's look at 7.2 shimi invests four million shimi invests four million into an account earning interest of six percent per annum so what shimi does Invest four million into an account earning interest of six percent per annum, compounded monthly. She withdraws three thousand rand, or rather thirty thousand rand per month. Her first withdrawal is exactly one month after she deposited the four million. How many withdrawals of thirty thousand will she be able to make? Yeah. So now there is a, a very interesting thing here. Because what is happening here is that Shimi inverts the time zero and inverts four million. Into an account earning interest of 6% per annum, compounded monthly, and she withdraws 3,000 per month. Her first withdrawal is exactly one month after she deposited the 4 million. So now there is time one and there is a withdrawal. And the withdrawal is actually of 30,000 rand. Right, that's one month after. So you have 30,000 rand. Another withdrawal of 30,000 Rand. Another withdrawal of 30,000 Rand. 
Okay, it goes on and on, and she keeps withdrawing money. How many withdrawals? So there's no gap here. This is not a delayed annuity. It is not something we call a deferred. It is not a deferred annuity. It's not. Not, not a deferred annuity. It's not deferred. But how many withdrawals of 30,000 will Shimi be able to make? What is the answer to this question, number so? What formula are you going to use? Say, so I use the present formula. Well done. Use the present value formula. Correct. X, which is 1 minus 1 plus i to the power what? To the power minus n divided by i. Right, we continue. So what is the present value? Right. It is 4 million. Well done, it's exactly 4 million. So the present value is 4 million. X is what? 30,000. One plus. The interest rate is what? 0 0.06. Because it's 6% per annum, but it's compounded monthly, so you divide by 12. And you raise this to the nth power. And you divide by 0 0.06 divided by 12. So you cross multiply. So you have 4 million. Zero point zero six divided by twelve. You cross multiply and then you divide by thirty thousand. One minus one plus zero point zero six divided by twelve to the power minus n. Right, so. Let's use a calculator to see what answer we're getting here. So what we're then getting here is exactly 4 million. Times uh, 0 0.06 divided by 12, 30,000. Then you're getting two thirds, two thirds, two out of three. So then you'll have here two out of three, which is divided by one minus one plus 0 0.06 you divided by 12 to the minus n. One plus 0 0.06 you divided by 12 to the minus n is equal to, you bring this on the other side, you then have one minus two over three is going to give one out of three. And then at this point, uh, you will continue to get the answer and we can get the answer as follows. Meaning, meaning minus n is going to be equal to the log. The log of 1 over 3 base 1 plus 0, 0, 0,06 out of 12, which means n is equal to 
Right, so use a calculator to get the answer to this one, and this is the answer. Launching our calculator, we we'll have the following. The log, open bracket, one plus, 0 0.06 out of 12, close bracket. And then you have exactly one divided by three. Right, we have that, but there's another negative. So the answer is gonna be the following. It's going to be exactly 220.27. 220.27. Right. As a consequence, then you can then safely say, therefore, Shimi will make, or Yar, she will make. Right, you come here and then say she will make she will make two hundred and twenty withdrawals. Two hundred and twenty withdrawals. She will make two hundred and twenty withdrawals. Any question? Any question? Right, any question? Any question? We'll move on. Uh, no questions, sir. All right, we move on. Right, now 7.2.2 .2 is asking, they're saying how many withdrawals will she be able to make if she changes the amount withdrawn per month to 20,000? Something shut your answer. How many now? You see, she's changing because now how many withdrawals will she be able to make if she changes the amount withdrawn per month to 20,000. Now she withdraw, she's withdrawing what? 20,000. Okay, we have, we have two minutes. You have exactly two minutes. You have exactly two minutes. Right. You have exactly two minutes. Please try it and then we shall give it to you now. Okay. Right. 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 We continue. We continue. Let me know when you're done, Nambuso.
Let me know when you're done, Numbuso. Let me know when you're done, Numbuso. Okay. You see, there are a couple of things that are very important here. Look, we're going to use again the present value formula. One plus i to the minus n divided by what? Divided by i. Then we have 4 million. You have 20,000 that is being withdrawn. 20,000 is now what is being withdrawn instead of the instead of 30,000. And then we have 1 minus 1 plus. I lost you there. Okay, if I lose you, please join in again. And then this is going to be exactly minus n. If I lose you, please join in. So that you can discuss. 0, 0,06 then divide by 12. Then you have exactly 4 million. divided by 12. And then you have 20,000. One minus one plus 0 0.06, you divide by 12 raised to the power minus n. And then you multiply. If you, if I lose you, please join the meeting again, just in case you get disconnected. So you have here exactly 4 million. Times 0 0.06. You divide it by 12. Divided by 20,000. And then what we're getting here, we're getting exactly 1. So we shall put one here. This is one minus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the minus n. And therefore, what you do is uh, you bring this one to the other side and one minus one becomes zero and we have one plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the power minus n and the result is zero. Right, and now we're getting exactly this. So now as a consequence, what we're able to see here is that what is the meaning of this? So we know that the conclusion is that she can make she can make any number any number which means that we have an infinite right you have an infinite you have an infinite number You can write here and say she can make, just to make sure it forms one sentence. She can make any number, any number. And this any number means that an infinite. Number. 
an infinite number of withdrawals. An infinite number of withdrawals. Moreover, you proceed to then say, at this point, what we're able to see is that her interest. Right, her interest and the interest and equals her withdrawal. Her withdrawal amount she will she will only be drawing she will only be drawing the interest amount she will only be drawing the interest amount She'll only be drawing the interest amount. So because she'll only be drawing the interest amount, then she will actually make her an indefinite number of the withdrawals. She can just keep withdrawing, 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 and the money will never run out. None money will never run out because we actually go to this particular equation here, and this means the withdrawals themselves are infinite. They're infinite, and then this will keep going on the withdrawals. Let's look at the next question. Let's look at the next question. The next question is about S trade. S trade opened a savings account with a single deposit of 1000. On 1 April 2022, she then makes 18 monthly deposit of 710 at the end of every month. Her first payment is made on 30th of April 2022 and her last payment on 30th of September 2023. The account earns interest or at 15% per annum compounded monthly. Determine the amount that should be in her savings account immediately after her last deposit is made on 30th of September 2023. So we continue. We continue. So what is the answer to this one here? 7.3. Seven what is the answer to this question here? Air Street opens a savings account. S trade, open a savings account with a single deposit of 1,000 Rand on 1 April 2022. She then makes 18 monthly deposits of, 7, of 700 Rand at the end of every month. Her first payment is made on the 30th of April 2022 and her last payment in the 30th of September 2023. The account ends interest at 15% per annum compounded monthly. Determine the amount that should be in her savings account immediately after her last, her last deposit is made, which is on the 30th of September 2023. Because S Street opened a savings account with a single deposit of exactly 1,000 Rand on 1 April 2022. She then makes 18. Right, she then makes exactly 18 deposits of 700 at the end of every month. Eight, 
A first payment is made on 30th of April 2022 and a last payment on the 30th of September 2023. Now, look at how many months these are going to be. So we can use some timeline here. Right, and then there's time zero, there's time one, there's time two, there's time three, and so on and so forth, and this goes on. But now if she then makes 18 monthly deposits of 700 rand at the end of every month, so there's going to be 700, another 700, and these are like 18 of them. And T18 is going to be another 700. Right, but obviously a first payment is made on the 30th of April 2022 and a last payment on the 30th of September 2023. So you are able to then see that clearly what you have here is a total of 18 months. Because from April 2022, right, from to have the first payment made um, on the 3rd of April 2022, so you would remember that you have your months, and your months are 12, like January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, October, November, then you put December. Okay. Yeah, if I lose you, please uh, reconnect again. Wanted to just uh, draw, let me make this clearer. All right, making this clearer, let's draw another timeline below this one just to discuss this concept of a timeline. Right, if the first payment um, is made on the date of April 2022, means that there is April. Right, yeah, we can do that. And then now, if it is made on the 10th of April, you can say that April starts and ends. And you can then say here you have at the end of April, like April the 1st and then the end. So you have 10th of April, then there's a payment of 700. Then there is May end. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay. Then you have after December is January, February, March, April. Okay, so now you have uh, the end of April there, and you'll be able to count that from April 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, up to December, then you count nine months 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up to December. So you're counting nine months. Then after that, we have one, two, three, four. Right, and then we have four extra months. Right. So, but now you are told then that Estate opened a savings account with a single deposit of 1,000 rand on the 1st of April. So on the 1st of April, there was a deposit of 1,000. 1,000 rand. She then makes 18 monthly deposits, 700 rand the end, at the end of every month. Okay, if they tell you up to 18 deposits, her first payment is made on the 10th of April, which should be at the end of April. 
2022. And a last payment uh, on the 30th of September, 2023. Okay. So you need to go on. If you then say a first payment is made on the 30th of April, then you count nine months up to September. Right. So in other words, now you count also up to December. Then you count from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. One, two. Okay, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, up to the September, then you have nine months up to December, then another nine months up to the end of September. So that is why, obviously, you have the 18 months there. Okay, now the account ends interest of 15% at 15% per annum compounded monthly. Determine the amount that should be in a savings account immediately after. Her last deposit is made on the 30th of what? Of September 2023. Which means that A is T, which is 1 plus I to the nth power. The present value, 1,000. Zero comma one five divided by 12 to the 18th power. Right, so we're going to use the calculator here to be in a position to then say, if this 1,000 is there, because determine the amount that should be in a savings account immediately after her last deposit is made on the 30th of, of September. Now, look, the 1,000 rent is going to proliferate. It's going to grow because it is subject to some interest. So that then in the end, what you're going to have is exactly 1,000. Open bracket one plus. Then you take this one. Not point one five. You divide by twelve. Okay. You close the bracket. You raise it to the eighteenth power. And then what is the answer? Okay. It is twelve fifty point five eight. So you're gonna do here twelve fifty point five eight. Twelve fifty point five eight. What is then the future value? One plus I to the nth power minus one divided by I. So that the future value. Okay, so these deposits are of 700. One plus 0, 0,15. You divide by 12. The months are exactly 18 minus 1 divided by 0, 0.15 divided by 12. So you use your calculator. So that in the end, we have exactly 700. One plus 0 0.15 divided by 12. to the power 18 minus one you divide by 0 0.15 divided by 12 right and then you're getting exactly 140 14032 
So what we're getting here is exactly one four zero three two comma three three. Then the amount. Then the amount. Then the amount. Okay, then here you have the amount. And the amount is twelve fifty point five eight plus one four zero three two point three three. Okay, you add these things up. You get exactly 15,000. You check this 15,282,91. So, which is exactly that. So, you have 1250.58. Plus one four zero three two point three three, and you get exactly fifteen thousand two hundred and eighty two and ninety one cents, and that's exactly the answer. So in other words, the one thousand is going to grow to exactly one thousand two hundred and fifty rand and fifty eight cents. The future value of the you know, deposits of 700 rand will amount to 14,032 rand and 33 cents, whose summation is 15,282.91 cents. Move on to the next question. Sir? Yes, please. Um, there is, it, there is, it is important, sir, to start with the, um, the, the equation. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, it's important to start start with the equation. Okay, the formula. Yes. To start to start with the yes. formula. To, to use to show that you're using A equals P open bracket one plus I to the nth power. You know? It is important. Like, yeah. yeah, like the that yes. Yes, on that equation, but like even you get the twelve, um, the twelve hundred and yeah. Yes. Okay. So I said it, it must do. You must do that. Even you you are going to do the future value, or you have to choose between them. Oh, okay. You have to choose between this one and this one. Yes. You must do both. Why? Because this 1,000, you see, Astrid opened a savings account with a single deposit of how much? 1,000. Because this 1,000 is a single deposit. And it was on one on the 1st of April, 2022. It means that this 1,000 is just gonna be, actually be subjected to only compound interest. Because it's not, it's not a, you know, a continuous, continuous deposit. It's a single deposit. So it's just going to deposit the 1,000. It's going to stay there for 18 months. So for the 18 months, it's going to just be subject to what? Compound interest. You get the point? Yes, sir. But the 700, she then makes 18 monthly deposits of 700. So the 700 are how many? They are 18 monthly deposits. That is why this seven, this amount of 700, they actually constitute a future value. But now we must put them into the 
into the what future value formula. Yes, but this one thousand is different. It's not. It's not like the seven hundreds that were deposited there. It's just only ones. So it's just gonna grow to a compound interest. So we must because it's only one. This one thousand. Then we use compound interest for it. But these seven hundreds that are many. And you want to determine the amount that should be in a savings account immediately after a last deposit, 30th of September. So the amount that will be in the savings in the future, on the 30th of September 2023, the whole thing started on the 1st of April 2022. But the first payment was made on the 30th of April 2020, what? 2022. It means, therefore, the 1,000 is going to be a single payment. So you must use comp compound interest for it. Then the 700, 700, 700 deposits, then they're going to constitute a future value, um, you know, um, annuity. So you must do both of them. And then you must add them at the end, the amount, because then the 1,000 is going to be 1250.58. Then you have the 1250.58. Then this one is going to be 14032.33. 3, and you put it there. So the future value must add it to the amount that the 1,000 is going to be, because that 1,000 is going to grow, because it is subject to what? To, 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 to interest. Any question? No questions. OK, we'll move on. OK, the next one is on the uh, calculus. Determine f prime of x from first principles if f of x is 3x squared minus 6. This one I know that you know very well that f prime of x is the limit. Because it's first principles, right? First principles, the limit is h tends to 0. Then we have x plus h minus what? f of x all over h. We have f prime, which is the limit, h tends to zero, which is 3x plus h. And then minus 6. f of x is 3x squared minus 6 divided by h, which means that it is f prime of x. You expand this one. The x squared, you expand it, it becomes, the x plus h squared becomes x squared 2xh plus, you know, x, um, h squared minus 6. You distribute here 3x squared plus 6 divided by 6, uh, by h. The limit. h tends to 0. Okay, this one is going to be exactly... 3x squared, 6xh, 3h squared minus 6, 3x squared plus 6, you divide by h. Okay. Let's check what we have here. Let us check exactly what we have here. Minus this is going to cancel out. Okay, so, but also this one is get the signs right. The x is going to be negative and then plus 6. Okay, the limit is h tends to 0. We have 6 x uh, h plus 3 h squared to divide by h. The limit. Take 3 h out and have 2 x h h like that. So this one is going to be 6 x h 3 h squared. Okay, what well, do you have? H zero, H cancels. Two X plus H, H tends to zero, it's gonna be 
2x plus 0, which is what? Okay, this is going to be a 3. Okay, this is a small little 3 here. The h is going to cancel, but it's a 3. Which is 6x. Six x. So that now from first principles, then this is going to be exactly what six x. H is going to cancel H, and then we have a three outside. Three times, you know, two x is six x. Any question about the first principles? No question. Okay, now you're going to try the next one. 8.2, because now we have f of x, which is equal to 2 the square root of x minus 1 over x all squared. So now if f of x, you square this. You square the 2, it becomes a 4x. This times this times that. Plus 2, 2 the square root of x. Minus 1 over the square root of x plus 1 over x squared. For x minus 2 by 2 is 4. x to the minus 1 half and then x like this. Um, so this one here. is x to the minus 2, so that f of x is 4x, and then we have minus 4, you divide this one, x to the minus 1 half, x to the minus 2. So that we have the derivative of 4x, which is 4, plus 2x to the minus 3 over 2 minus 2x to the minus 3. That becomes a derivative. But now you can do it in blue color. That is the first derivative. So the first derivative f primed is 4 plus 2 over x to the power 3 over 2 minus 2 over. This one you can write as x to the power 3 like that. So any question here? So that becomes the that becomes the the derivative. <clears throat> and this derivative can also be written as f prime of x, which is exactly four plus two divided by. the square root of x cubed. And then you have x cubed like that. You have exactly x cubed that way. Where's the question here? Any question, Nombuso? No questions. You understand this one? Yes. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Now, if you look at 8.3, determine the interval for which f is concave up. How do you find the interval uh, for which f is concave up? If f of x is 3x cubed, 3x squared, plus 6x minus 2, how do you determine the interval where this is concave up? How do you determine the interval in which that is concave up? Um, okay. Um, I think say. So. What are you supposed um, to do? I will first, um, I will times three with exponent three. 
You will okay. times three with exponent three, okay? And then what do we achieve? I will get six. Please think again. Three times three? It's, it's nine. <laughs> well done, so, okay, that's fine. It's nine. And then here, what do you get? Get the two, two. and then, then what do you get? What do you do next? Then times two with three, which gives me six and x. Yeah. Then six. Then what do we do next? Um, okay. Some start. Please come again. I'm stuck. You are stuck. Are you stuck? Yes. Okay, then you must get the concave up. Concave up means that you must get the second derivative and the second derivative is bigger than zero. Then this means concave up. Then there is concave down. Which is concave what? Okay, now we find the second derivative here. What is 2 times 9? 18x minus 6. So that is the second derivative. But concave, concave up means the second derivative is what? f double prime is greater than 0. Now, and then now, what is the, the f double prime? It is 18x minus 6 is bigger than 0. Which is 18x is bigger than 6. Which means that it is 18x is bigger than 6. You divide by 18, you divide by what? By 18 like that. Which means x is bigger than 1 over 3. So determine the interval for which f is concave up. So you have this one, and therefore the interval is the is x is an element of the interval from 1 over 3 to infinity. You see? So if they say concave up, you must find f double prime. You must differentiate two times and then make the derivative strictly greater than zero. Then that means concave up. If they're going to say, because they said concave up, but if they say concave down, then you must say the second derivative is less than what? It's less than zero. Do you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll move on to the next question. Question nine. Sketched below is the graph of f prime. Determine the derivative of f of x. Or rather, they're saying the derivative of f of x equals minus 2x cubed, minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 20. Okay, so sketch below is the graph of what? Of f primed. This graph is the graph of f primed, this one. The derivative of f of x equals this. So it is the derivative of f of x equals this. So they found the derivative and then they, they did what? And then they sketched the graph. So they found f primed, blah, 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 like this. And then they sketched the graph. Now, points a, b, and c are intercepts of f primed with the x-axis. So there's a, b, and c all together. Now, write down the coordinates of what? Write down the coordinates of a. Write down the coordinates of what? Of a. So what, what is the answer? What are the coordinates of A? What are the coordinates of A? What are the coordinates of A? Um, so yes. Okay. 
can I try me? Yes, please. Okay, I think say. Yes. Okay. We are. Um, okay, we know that our y is equal to zero. Then. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we have to find for x. Yes. Uh, means, um, I'm going to. Um, to make my the equation here. Is Ibeg with standard form? Yes, you can write it in standard form, correct. So f of x is minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 12x plus what? Plus 20, all together. Right, and then now this graph is the graph of what? Of the first derivative of f prime. So you must get f prime of x and then now you need to multiply 3 with minus 2 getting minus 6x 2 times minus 3 is minus so is minus 6x squared is minus 6x the derivative of, of the 12 this is what is exactly 12 all together then this a here a is this one is called the y-intercept it is the y-intercept of what of f prime so f prime is this one so what you're just supposed to get is the what is the y-intercept. How to get the y-intercept? You let x be equal to what? Zero. Because this is like a y-intercept, so you need to let x be zero. f prime of zero minus six times zero, which is exactly what? 12. So that the coordinates of A are x is 0, and y is what? It's 12. So those are the coordinates of A. So the coordinates of A will be obtained from the graph of f prime, because this is the graph of f prime. But if this is the equation of f prime in standard form, then you need to let x be 0. Let x be 0. If x is 0, then you get y, and y is 12. Okay, now determine the coordinates of B and C. Determine the coordinates of B and C. Um. Yeah. Okay, we are going to... B is this one and C is that one, yeah? So how do you find the coordinates of B and C? Okay. I I think, say, we are going to do a... We are going to use a quadratic formula. When I use the, the quadratic formula, okay? Anyhow, yeah, what are B and C? Okay, yeah. they are... So x is equal to zero. Yes, then, so you need to find the x intercepts, right? Yes. Then we have to find y. Yes. yes. Okay, good. So now if that is the case, you need to find x what? X intercepts. How do you find the x intercepts? But you need to first the x intercepts of the graph. This graph is the graph of f prime. So you must first get what? F prime of x. What is F prime of x? Which is minus 6x squared minus 6x plus 12. So now, if this is the graph of F prime, So now, being the graph of f prime, what do you do? You must get the x intercepts because this b and c are points where this graph cuts the x axis, and those are called what x what intercepts. How do you get x intercepts? We let y. You let y be zero. So you're gonna let y be zero here. 
So when y is zero, then you're gonna have minus six x squared minus six x plus what? Plus 12, all together. You divide through by minus six, getting exactly x squared plus x minus two equals zero. So that then in the end is x squared plus x minus two equals zero, which means that you have x plus two, then x minus one equals what? Zero, which means that x is minus two or x is what? X is one altogether, which means B will have the coordinates minus two, zero. C will have coordinates one and zero. Any question? Can you say? Yes. Um, if uh, I'm, I, I started by doing e quantitative formula only. Yes, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, the quadratic formula can also work. At this point, you can use the quadratic formula here. Then you'll be actually using the what? The quadratic. Quadratic what? Quadratic formula. Okay. And the quadratic formula that you can use. Stays that x is minus b plus or minus the square root. Minus 4ac all over what? All over 2a. Hello, Nombuso. Hello, Nombuso. Say. Are you able to see the screen? I think there's, there was a network issue very slightly. And then now, are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So now we found the coordinates of B and C. Even during the week, we need to have a lot of meetings. We need to have a lot of meetings so that we can solve a lot of problems, so that we can practice more. Because now we need to be sure of the marks. We need results. We need distinctions, we need level seven, but now for us to get level seven, we need to practice hard. So now that's something you need to know. Hey, I'm gonna be reminding you during the week. I'm gonna be sending you messages so that you can remember. Right, so in 9.1.3, which points on the graph of F will have exactly the same X values as B and C? Which points on the graph of F we need to consider the graph of F will have exactly the same X values in S, B, and C. What do you think? What do you think? These points are like turning points for the graph of F. So which points? Those points are called the turning. Turning points. At the turning points, this is the graph of F primed, but at this point, then F primed is zero. At this point, F primed is what? It's zero. So which points on the graph of F will have exactly the same X values as B and C? Turning points. Turning points turning points then we move on to the next question For which values of X will F be increasing? 
values for which values of x will f be increasing? What do you think, Nombuso? This is the graph of f prime. For which values of x for, for which values of x will f be increasing? What do you think? Nombuso, please wake up if you are sleeping. <laughs> yes. Um, for, yes. For which values of x will f be increasing? So when f is increasing, how are you going to say it in the graph of f prime that f is increasing? Um, it will be, be say. It will be which one? Negative two. Okay, so whenever, because now here the derivative is negative. Here the derivative, this is a graph of F prime, this is a graph of the derivative. So here the derivative is what is positive. Then the derivative is what is negative. So for which values of X is the is F increasing? When the derivative is what is positive. Are we together? Yes. So now, where will it be actually then increasing? So increasing would be when f primed of x is positive. The derivative is positive here. The derivative is negative here because y is negative there, which means therefore um, it's going to be positive between minus 2 and what? And 1. Between minus 2 and what? and one. So that is when x is an element of the interval from minus two to what? From minus two to one. Okay, it's reporting that the network has been a bit unstable for the couple of seconds, but I'm sure that is when I actually undergo restoration. So between minus two and one, then f is increasing. Determine the y coordinate of the point of inflection of f. Okay, now let us find the point of inflection. How do you find the point of inflection? For the point of inflection, you need to find uh, the second derivative, uh, second derivative, and make it equal to zero. But f of x is two x cubed minus three x squared plus. 12x plus 20. Then you're going to find f primed of x, which is minus 6x squared minus 6x plus 12. Then you're going to do the, the second derivative, which is minus 12x minus 6. And then this is equal to 0 for the uh, inflection point. And uh, what you then are able to do here. What you then are able to do here becomes the following. Right, so you actually have the minus 12x equals 6, which means it's 6 divided by minus 12, which is minus 1 over 2. So now determine the y coordinate of the point of inflection of f. Nine point one point five. F of x is that, which is minus two x cubed minus three x squared plus twelve x plus twenty. Which is minus two minus one half cubed minus three squared plus twelve. Minus that plus 20. Right now, if you use a calculator, you can even do without it. All these things, if you add them up, they give exactly 27 out of 2. 
And 27 out of 2 is actually the same as 13 decimal comma 5. Or decimal point 0.5. So determine the y coordinate of the point of inflection. This is the y coordinate of the point of inflection. That is the y coordinate, which is 13 comma 5. The, the point of inflection is going to occur at x equal to minus 1 half. And if you plug it in there, then you'll be able to get that f of minus one half is actually exactly 13 comma five it's exactly 13 comma five all right so now we have done we've gone through this discussion i think that it's enough for us to call it call it a very good day are we together yes sir it's enough to call it a very good day meaning that we shall meet also during the week. I'm going to be reminding you. I'm going to be sending you messages on WhatsApp so that you remember. Okay. Yes. Yeah, to remind you. I, I must thank you for joining us today. We shall see you during the course of the week. We shall see when you are. I'm going to check on you. If you are busy, you let me know. If you are not busy, please join our discussion so that we can practice better for Friday. For the paper one. And then the paper two also. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks so much, Rumbuso, and, and all the best. Have a good evening and goodbye. Bye, sir. Goodbye.